Before we get started, I just wanted to remind you guys to go check out EliteThrowsCoaching.com. We just re-released the website. It's a whole brand new website, whole new look to it. Much easier to navigate to find the products that we carry, the camps and the clinics that we do throughout the year. So make sure to go check out EliteThrowsCoaching.com to learn more about what we do and also to read the blog post that goes along with this video. In the last two videos, we talked about figuring out where you want to go to school. The first video, we talked about being the aggressor, being the outgoing one who is going out and trying to find the schools that fit the best. The second video, we talked about figuring out your type. Just like online dating or when you go to try to meet guys or meet girls, you have a type and you should be trying to figure out the type of school that you want to go to. In today's video, we're going to talk about the next step. So a lot of you are probably thinking, well, now I have it narrowed down. I have 10 schools on my list. I had eight different cr criteria that made my type. Small school, in the city, blah, 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 blah. You've got your eight or 10 things that make up your perfect school. And now you have eight to 10 schools that kind of fit that type. The next step is you're probably thinking, all right, let's email the coach and see if he's interested. We're not there quite yet. You see, because if you go out and you try to meet a girl, you have to realize that she might be a 10, you might not be a 10. You might be a six, you might be a seven. And you might be chasing after a girl or a guy that's kind of out of your league. It's really tough to say, but that's life. I don't try to pull any punches. I never have in these videos, but that's the way it works. If you're a seven and you're going after like a Sports Illustrated swimsuit model, very small chance she's going to be interested in you. Let's face it. It is a little rough. It is a little harsh, but sometimes... That's what happens. So really, your next step is to see if the schools that you like are going to be attracted to you. So here's what you need to do. Every college nowadays has an athletics website that goes along with it. So if you are going to, you know, John Smith College and they're the John Smith Rebels, let's say, who knows, then you probably can find like rebelathletics.com or rebelsports.com. There's got to be some type of athletic website that is associated or affiliated with the school. From there, you need to find the track and field page of that website and start doing some research. The first part of research you want to do is look back at previous articles that were written about the track team, find your event, and see if you'd be able to contribute to your team immediately upon getting to the school. Say for example, you are a female high school shot putter and your PR last year as a junior was 38 feet. You know that next year in college, you're gonna be using the same weight shot put. You're gonna be using that four kilogram shot put. Now you go on their website and you see that their school record is 36 feet, that two seniors who graduated last year were throwing 35 and 36 feet, and there's a new sophomore that's throwing 34 feet. Well, that means, of course, that you are gonna be able to contribute to your school immediately upon showing up. This year, you're probably gonna throw 40 feet as a senior. You're gonna to go to college next year as a freshman and break their school record and probably be the farthest shot putter female on your team. The other side of that coin is say for example, you are a high school boy and you are throwing discus 140 feet as a junior. And now it's your senior year and you're looking for a school and you go to the different schools athletic websites and you take a look and you look at how far their guys are currently throwing. 
Keep in mind, you're going to be going to a heavier discus, the two kilogram men's discus next year. So you've got to knock off a lot of distance over what you currently throw the boys high school discus. So you currently throw the boys high school discus, let's say 140 feet. That probably means next year when you get to college, the two kilogram discus is probably going to be going about 120, 125 feet if you continue working on it. Okay, so you look at the college's website and you see that the school record is 175 feet. They have a sophomore right now throwing 160. They have a junior right now throwing 165. And in the past couple of years, they've had a lot of different throwers come in that were all throwing about that 150, 145 foot mark when they were freshmen. If you're throwing about 125, or you can expect to be throwing about 125 as a college freshman, you're not going to be as attractive to that school. They are like an 8 and you're like a 5. So they're probably not going to actively pursue you once you reach out to them. They're probably not going to offer you a scholarship once you reach out to them. So you need to know this going in. Colleges are much different than high schools, okay? College coaches are paid to get results. The way, the number one way that college coaches are going to be able to get better results are by recruiting better high school athletes. So no matter what, they are trying to get the best athlete possible out of everyone who they're looking for. So if they're looking at a couple of high school throwers that are currently throwing 175, and you're a high school thrower currently throwing 140, you're gonna be a lot lower on their depth chart. Now, that's not to say that you might be able to walk on the team, you might be able to be a non-scholarship athlete that you know maybe doesn't travel to the big meets for the first couple of years, but you continue working, you continue training hard, you continue with the coaching, and then by the time you're a junior or a senior, you're able to contribute and score points for the team. But really, what we're looking to do is we're looking to assume how far you're going to be throwing your freshman year of college and then see how that stacks up against other freshmen and sophomores that have recently joined that college. Once you narrow down that list of 8 or 10 schools to the schools that you know you're going to be able to contribute to as soon as you step foot on campus that first day of practice, then you can start to reach out to the college coaches. In the next video, we're gonna talk about how to reach out to these college coaches, different ways that you can get their attention, different ways that you can let them know that you exist, and strategies when you are emailing them, when you are calling them, when you are sending them info to make sure that they are interested and that they stay interested throughout your entire rest of high school career. Make sure to go to EliteThrowsCoaching.com to check out the blog post that goes along with this video. And while you're there, take a look around the site at some of the other things that we offer, like our ebooks, DVDs, and the camps and clinics that we do all around the country. Thanks again for checking out the video. I'll talk to you soon.